What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Prodigious Customs YouTube channel. Today, we're doing it. We're getting this car ready to go to the paint booth. We're gonna block all of our primed areas, as well as DA all of our other panels in prep for paint. Now, I can't stress it enough, but Guide Co is gonna be your best friend when ever blocking any prime surfaces, any, any surface really. If you're checking for straightness, if you're checking for waves, lumpiness, that's gonna be your best friend. And I don't care whether it's the dry charcoal or if it's the rattle can spray on kind, it's gonna help highlight which areas are going on. Especially when you get to primer edges. Even though I soft edge this with tape, there's still just enough buildup there that if you're not careful enough, you might see that later. Whereas when you load it up with some guide coat, just past that primer line will be a nice little hazy black edge, letting you know I have more to block. You need to be more thorough. You need to really go through that area with the proper pressure, proper angle, and get it all worked out. That way, no issues. So, with that said, I'm gonna get this whole car guide coated out, especially our epoxy primed areas and our spot primed areas. I'm gonna start with 220 on both of them just to kind of cut most of the texture out. Then I'll switch to 320, 400, and I'll finish the panel in 600. You can really literally start at 400 if you wanted to. It's how I was taught in school, but to get the straightest, best result, 220 is going to be your best friend. It's going to cut it straighter and more accurate than if you just jump on with 400. Not saying that 400 won't get you there. It might take more sanding, more paper, because you want to keep your paper sharp. That's another thing. Whereas with 220, you're cutting most of the texture out already, getting it flat, where then when you step through the grits, all you are working on is getting rid of those deeper scratches. And again, guide coats your buddy gonna help you get through those. With that said, let's get this car nice and guide coated up so we can get to blocking. Alrighty, as you can see I got lots of different tools up here on top of the car. I just want to talk about DAs real quick because when we get to sanding the clear, this is gonna be our best friend. This is not the DA I'm gonna use. This is a 3 16 throw DA. So it's more aggressive, the pattern is more widespread. I have what I like to call a finishing DA here that's 3.30 seconds throw as it spins around. So the pattern is much tighter. You have more overlap, more uniformity, if you will, that's going to get you a tighter, more close-knit pattern as you go across the panels. Your scratches are going to be more uniform. And ultimately, I feel like you'll get a better result. Are you going to still get a good result with this one? Yes. I'm not denying that. A lot of people just use this 3 16 style DA, but especially when I'm doing polishing and whatnot, what have you, and finishing work, finishing out my primed areas or just sanding clear coat to be re-cleared, I'm gonna use my 332nd based on the tighter pattern, based on the closeness of the uniform pattern. It's gonna get more scratches in it, closer together, finer, and I feel like it just gives you a better result. So enough of that. I also have my blocks up here. So the longer your block and the harder your block is gonna work best across your big flat panels. So for example, on the, the face of the door skin, I'm gonna be using this eight inch block. Can I go bigger? Yes. But this is gonna get me there for what I'm doing today. Throughout the reverse curve on the panel, I have a round block. Now the thing to be careful with on your round block is your contact point becomes extremely thin. So if you're trying to work big areas with this, your contact patch is very small, very fine, and you're more likely to screw it up if you're trying to use this across your whole panel. I'm just gonna mainly focus in the reverse curve on the door. I also have different blocks for different areas of the car and different stiffness of blocks. So this one's gonna be really soft. It's gonna allow me to round off edges. This one's a little bit more stiff. I'll still be able to get things straight. 
as well as this gives me a closer pattern that I can roll as well. Now your other best friend while sanding clear and prepping a panel is your interface pad. So this is gonna squish and kinda go to the contour. It's not gonna dig like the edge of your DA. You can't dig as hard with an interface pad. And don't get me wrong, you can still dig with an interface pad because you can squish the foam all the way down. But it's going to roll over the edges as I keep my DA flat on here and mellow everything out. And if there's any high spots or whatever, it's kinda gonna flow through them I'm not looking to straighten out the panel with it. I'm just looking to sand it in prep for clear or base coat. Well, enough with all the details about your blocks and your DAs and all that stuff. Let's get down to work. Let's get this stuff blocked out and prep this thing so we can go to the paint booth and get this thing painted. Now that we're ready to go, got our blocks out, got everything ready to roll, we need to mask up our edges that we don't want to sand. Just like with the primer, just like with bodywork, anywhere you don't want sanded, mask that off, take care of it. You don't need to be scratching things that don't need to be scratched, especially painted panels that are adjacent that you don't plan on painting. Because if you scratch them, you're most likely not gonna be able to polish it out and you're gonna end up painting that panel. So take the time, mask those areas off. Even if it is just loose masking, just enough to cover it so that you're protecting yourself, your investment, and your time. Let's get down to it. Alrighty, just like sanding your body filler, just like prepping the panel, you wanna do a nice 45 degree slide in an X pattern, going all the way across the panel, get everything straight. And once I have most of the texture out, it's looking really flat, I'm gonna jump up to 320 because I know the panel's straight. There's not an issue here. Better to protect yourself. You don't wanna burn through, especially where you have body filled areas because you're gonna end up spot priming those in. You can seal them if they barely are peeking through, but it's best to not cut through your material. You want the same substrate. That is vital, it is key. If you have the same substrate, your shrink rate should be the same. You shouldn't see any of the other repairs. Everything should come through just as it should. So, there won't be odd areas. You can't see the repair. You won't have cow pies in your panel. It'll be uniform. I'm gonna go ahead and get this knocked out and we'll come back. So as you're blocking, remember we had a big dent here. This is showing just barely low. Even though I started putting my primer in there first to try to get that build, and even though with guide cut on there, it all blocked out smooth, you can see it still looks a little low according to the block. That's what your primer is there for. This should help you to get all the way through that. Now if it lights up still black, very black through here, you should be worried because your bodywork probably isn't straight enough that you're gonna be able to block it out. You're gonna end up having to A, either do more bodywork or B, spot prime it back in because you're gonna end up burning through to your body filler on the sides out here. Not a big deal, but you just definitely don't want that to happen to you. So. I'm gonna keep blocking through here with 220. Make sure that all this goes away because if you go over there with too light of a grit, for example, 400, that's still probably gonna kinda of be there. It'll be a little bit of a wave. It's not gonna look like a dent anymore, but ultimately it's not something you want. So, keep blocking, keep pushing, you'll get it out. Alrighty, just how it goes. As you're blocking through the panel, especially when you're trying to do just a simple repair, you might come across one of these. Well, here's like a rock dent, you know, somebody peeled out of a parking lot or whatever and a rock hit your door. 
It leaves a little dent. If it doesn't bug you, okay, leave it. It bugs me, it bugs the crap out of me that we're making this panel nice, go to block it to make sure that it's flat and smooth and looks nice, and you come across another dent that you didn't see previously, it's irritating. Well, especially when you put a block on a panel, a lot of that kind of stuff's gonna show up, especially based on your blocking technique. If you got the proper technique, you're using the right pressure, you're cross hatching everything, things are gonna show up that are gonna be disheartening, but you know, it's at a good stage. You can go ahead, sand that with 80, put a little bit of body filler in there, spot prime it in before you get the whole door blocked and take care of it. Not a big deal. Whereas, you know, if you were blocking your clear for polishing and that shows up, that's really gonna stand out and that's super unfortunate. So just watch for that kind of stuff as you're blocking. If it doesn't bug you, you can just prep through it. If it does bug you, go ahead and fix it and move on. Alrighty, so this is what your 220 grit's gonna look like. Everything's gonna start feathering out. You're not gonna have any lines. Everything's gonna be kind of soft, like a cloud. There's gonna be no straight lines. There shouldn't be any straight lines. Any straight line is going to say, there's still a hard edge there, a primer line. And sometimes your light will freak you out. So you'll have to put on light from underneath because if you keep working it, there might just be a shadow. If you put your hand over it and it disappears or you can see the soft edge of where the primer should be, you know you're okay. But if that line's still there, you still have more to go. Keep sanding until it comes out. Hopefully you haven't burned through yet. I haven't. But you might have noticed I left all my edges raw. That's because edges are your most likely area to burn through. So I usually jump in at 320 or even 400 depending how sharp the edge is. Since this one's nice and roundish, it's still an edge but it's round, I'm gonna save it for 320 and go over to 320. Whereas around the wheel well, that sharp body line that's there, I'm gonna save that for 400. The reason being is, is it's such a fine point when your sandpaper goes across there, it's gonna cut way faster than any flat surface. So you don't wanna be burning through on all your edges. Focus on the flats and the areas that make the most sense, whereas the areas that are gonna shape up the best, you can wait until a later grit. So now we'll jump to 320. We'll guide coat everything, make sure everything's blacked back out, looks how it should. Then we'll jump up from there. After 400, we're gonna switch to a DA with an interface pad to mellow everything out and to get all of our texture out of the clear coat of all the other areas that we're going to be painting. Whereas if you're just blending onto that surface, you could do 800 grit is gonna be just fine. Whatever's gonna keep you from burning through and gonna flatten your panel the most, that's what you want to do. So with that said, let me guide coat this and we'll get this all the way to 400 and then we'll talk about DA in the panel. Alrighty, now we're guide coated back up, ready to start our 320 block. It's important to note, we're focused more on scratches now than getting the panel straight. You're still working on getting the panel straight, yes. But all your dents, everything should be blocked out with 220. 320 is not gonna do a better job than what 220 has already done. It's important to focus on your scratches and get rid of them. What I mean by that is 320 is finer than 220. You really wanna focus on getting any of your scratches, 220 grit scratches out with your 320 and so on for when you switch from 320 to 400. That way, when you switch to 600, the DA is gonna jump it all the way up to 600 and you'll be able to paint right over that surface. Or if you choose to seal it, your sealer is going to flatten all that out and you will not see those scratches in your base coat. Whereas if you leave those scratches, uh, the trained eye will definitely be able to look down the car or look into the paint and see cross hatching and sand scratches. You don't want that. Make sure you spend the time and get your scratches out. 
that's where guide coat especially helps as well. It's going to show off dark lines, dark scratches that are there. So beware of that and keep on blocking. All right, I did my little body work spot here. Got it feeling good. I'm at 320. This is 320 blocked out. Before moving on to everything else, I'm going to go ahead and spot this in. That way when I jump up to 400, because 320 technically is one of the recommended grits to spray your surfacer over the top of. So I got this in 220 around here. And if it gets out here a little bit, I'll still be able to block it out, no problem. But as you hit 320, I got a couple spots along the body line in the back that are starting to peek through as well as right up here at the front of the door. I can start seeing the base coat underneath the clear. It's turning more silver, not to bare metal just yet. Those are places you want to avoid when you're with your 400. You'll pick them up in the 600 and go over the top of them. If they barely burn through, it's not a big deal. Especially if you're using a sealer. If there's any, especially body filled marks that you're burning through and you're planning on using a water base, you're going to need to seal it or else that color is just going to absorb into your body filler. As we all know, our body fillers absorb moisture. Water base is water technically so it's going to just suck in there and it's going to look terrible it might look okay for a little bit but it's going to fail eventually so you need to either spot seal that in seal your door seal your quarter wherever you're painting seal it down that way you have a solvent layer of protection between those two so once i got this spotted in get a little bit of primer on here let it dry we'll block it we'll move on to 400 and then I'll show you 600. All right, there we go, 400 grit. We're on our way, no major burn throughs, no major issues, everything is blocking out really well. We caught our stupid dent we missed. It's caught up now. Everything is where it should be. Now, switching to 600 grit on a DA. Your goal with the 600 grit is to get all your other scratches out of the panel bring everything up to that 600 grit level. So go ahead and as heavy as you can, put that guide coat on here, make sure that all your scratches are gone. Take the time, make sure it's good because it would suck once you get it painted to be able to see some cross hatching in your paint job. If you take the time with the DA right now, it's gonna uniform everything out, everything will be mellow, you're not gonna see those scratches and everything's gonna be just fine. So take the time, don't rush it. As well as with this step, it is vital that you take the time, this is where the attention to detail comes in. You prep all of your edges that you didn't sand. So around inside corners, take your scotch Bright or your 600 grit, around door edges, if you're gonna break it, where are you going to break it inside the jam in an inconspicuous spot? Prep all your lips, everything that's going to get painted around your corners here into where you're going to stop it needs to be prepped. This is so vital, I can't stress it enough. If you want your paint job to last, sand around your corners as far as you can, as far as it makes sense into where your painted edge is going to end. If not, you're going to have flaking, you have the potential of a failing paint job right after you're done. So this is the most important step. Blow the car off, check for any pinholes. Make sure that if you see a shiny spot, you run your scotch Bright, you run your 600 over it, knock it down, give the paint the best chance to stick. Give yourself the best result that you can, that you are capable of. Unless you're in a time crunch, which sometimes that happens, I understand. Take the time. Nobody's got a gun to your head. Make it right. It's too much. It's too expensive to try and rush it and have a crappy result. You don't want a paint job that you can run a razor blade down the side of your car and pop all your new paint off. Make sure it's stuck. So make sure you take the time now. Prep your edges. Make it 100% as good as it can be. So with that, let's get the DA out, 
start prepping these panels in 600. So like I said before, using a interface pad just to give it that extra give. We're not gonna be gouging the panel, making any weird marks in it. We're gonna just flow everything into everything else as well as give it that uniform finish. So go ahead, guide cut the panel, run this bad girl on there and you're ready to go. And just like that, it's ready for paint. So keep in mind, you wanna keep this protected. If you can, throw a fresh sheet of plastic over it. You don't want any contaminants falling on it in the time that you have it finished, prepped, open. If everything's cut open and fresh to the time that you paint it. A lot of people let this kind of stuff sit. It's not a really good idea. It just gives time for contaminants or what have you to fall onto the surface and possibly cause adhesion problems later. So with that, just go ahead and protect it, wrap it up until you're ready to paint it. And if it sits for a while, you can reopen it with a scotch bright. Another thing you can do, get your wax and grease, wet your panel down, it'll help prep you for cleaning it, for paint anyway. Let it sit on there. Use the lights from either outside or above your head and look at the panel. Make sure there's no more dents. Make sure your body work is good. Look at everything. Make sure you're happy with it. And go ahead and wipe it off. And you're that much cleaner, that much farther ahead. Panel's good. Panel's clean. And you're ready to go. So just like that, it's ready, it's clean, wrap it up, bag it up, and this thing is ready to be painted. With that, I still need to sand the hood and the fenders. I won't bore you with that. Now that you know, just jump on it with 600 or 800 if you don't plan to do anything other than blend onto it, 800's fine. I'll get those caught up, ready to go. I also need to catch up the bumper and the wing. Since most of those come aftermarket, I wanna show you how to prep those parts so that you're not fighting them later or your paint job doesn't look like crap later. And oftentimes they are not perfect. They require some modification to fit on your car. So with that, I hope you have a great freaking day and I'll see you on the next one.